Hey everybody, it's Nate back for video number two on capacity planning. So obviously you see we have the tool up. We're gonna get into it. Um, but believe it or not, there's a lot of things we need to do before we can actually get into building the plan. Uh, but the first thing is to create one. So we'll go to portfolio item or portfolio capacity planning and we'll create a new plan. Coolest plan ever, obviously. Plan periods, single release. Um, this is the most common setting. You can do multi-release. There's some cool things coming, but we're gonna stick with single release. For us, that's a quarter. That release we're gonna plan is Q1 2024. Portfolio items, you can do it for any level, um, but most commonly it's feature because that's where the work items live, so we're gonna do that. Points and count. Uh, it used to be rally leaned heavy on the point side, but for capacity planning now, they are true equals. So you can do it points, you can do it count. We support it from preliminary estimate all the way up through the analytics, roll-ups, all that. So choose either. The next thing that we want to do is add some projects. So it comes up right here. Add your projects. You got your portfolio tree as you would expect. And I'm going to add three projects to the plan. All right. I'm going to have to move myself here. I can't see the done button. All right. Great. So now we have our plan. Now, there's two other operations now that have to take place that aren't inside this interface. So stop, go do those if they haven't been done. The first is prioritization. Hopefully someone is looking at a backlog of features and putting them in order. WizGIF, customer feedback, support cases, estimations, uh, general feeling of the day, I, I don't know. But as long as they are being prioritized, you're in good shape. Obviously, returning ET to home is number one, so I don't know why that was low. Uh, the next thing you wanna do, and I please don't forget this step, uh, this will save your sanity. You had the plan created for Q1. Anything that you now think should be considered, set the release. This is not obviously required. However, if you wanna keep clean with your data, you wanna be able to find unplanned work that's happening that's not planned, set this field. Um, you can now query on plans, you can query on releases, you can find where they don't match. Do this. Great, so we got that. Next, we're gonna flip back to the teams because I, I firmly believe one of the best things to start this out with is to figure out how big is this, right? Product is figuring out how big this is, or how big they want it to be. You gotta figure this out. So there's a couple different places in Rally and we got you covered. Um, the first place, go back and look at last quarter's plan. Um, here's Plucked, my favorite team. I may or may not be assigned to them. You'll never know. How did we do? Now, this was captured mid-iteration, so it looks terrible, but we'll pretend this is the end. Uh, we only got 95 points completed out of the 126 we estimated and the 172 we thought we had room for. So that's a good number. Well, not good, but... I also look at our team planning and uh, look through the sprints, try to get an average sprint, of what we completed, add that up. And lastly, we got a really cool tool that's found on the team board uh, under charts, capacity forecast. You can go in here and choose which weeks in the past you want considered for analysis. You can put in some details about the work, a period of time, and run it. And it'll give you a whole forecast on how many points it thinks that you can do and what's the you know, confidence level that you're actually going to do it. So you get some great confidence levels here, 75% confident, you can do 39 stories, 159 points. So I take these three and I apply my human understanding of my team, my situation, my business, my time of year, and I come up with a capacity that makes sense. You come back to capacity planning and input it. I really love doing this as soon as you can because it sets the table for a good discussion. Um, you want the power to be equally split between your product side and your execution side. And so you gotta get this in so us evil product managers don't take over. So this is great. Now we have all those features that we have picked out. So why not add them to the plan? This is our ask, right? So makes sense. So we'll check check out everything that's for this release and we should get our list that we saw in our priority order. And these are the six there. So let's go ahead and add those to the plan. Cool. 
So when they get added to the plan, they're unassigned. You might be confused about this because they all have a project set, so aren't they assigned? Yes and no. Uh, capacity plan is supposed to be a working document focused on conversations and getting a good idea of a plan before you click commit, before you all commit to doing it. So this plan project assignment is what will dictate whether or not these show up in our pro with our assigned to our projects or not. So once you have this, uh, you can start assigning these to the projects. And you can do that just by clicking in the field and choosing. And for each one of these that you choose, they will now be fully assigned. And that's important. Fully assigning meaning you're making a declaration that these teams are doing all of the work inside of these features. If you want to talk about splitting things up, please see the video on allocations. We're going to go into in depth on that because it is complicated and I want to devote a ton of time to it. So now that these are assigned, you'll see them here. We're starting to see some warnings. Uh, these warnings are telling me that an estimate is missing. At this point, and you could have done this earlier, but preliminary estimate is where you start. In Rally and in Agile in general, you want to start, you're constantly refining these estimates. You're walking down kind of a, a level of um, detail. And at this point, I don't know, this could be your product team, this could be your engineer team, it really doesn't matter, but these are best guess uh, preliminary estimates. And uh, I would recommend that somebody comes in and sets these. So it's just a field right here. You can choose, oh, this looks like a medium, and you can do that for all of your features. This will start having the other side of the table set. Now we've got capacity that we've inputted as, as um, execution teams, and now we're starting to see how big things are. Now we're starting the process of comparing these things. That's where we want to get to. So I would put in that preliminary for all of them. And as a, a shout out to the count people, uh, you can come into your workspace and you can uh, look at your preliminary estimate field and you can, uh, you can set it up to be whatever makes sense. So you, a, a medium for us is, is a 40 points uh, and we can also add a story count here of um, you know, maybe this is 10 stories. Um, so you can do it either way. That sets the table for what we're doing, and we're going to come back now next time, and we're going to talk about dealing with some of these warnings and how do we how do we uh, rationalize them. So thank you for your attention and for your time. I hope this is a little bit helpful, uh, and I'll see you in the next one.